By simply observing the sample regression equation, we cannot assess how well the predictor variables explain the variation in the response variable. However, several objective goodness of fit measures do exist that summarize how well the sample regression equation fits the data. Therefore, in this video, we are going to learn several goodness of fit measures that summarize how well the sample regression equation fits the data. In this video, we are going to use college data. Let me first explain our case. With college costs and student debt on the rise, the choices that families make when searching for and selecting a college is very important. Students and parents struggle to find clear, reliable data on critical questions of college affordability and value. For this reason, the Department of Education published a redesigned college scorecard that reports the most reliable national data on college costs and the student outcomes at specific colleges. In this case, Fiona Schmidt, a college counselor, believes that the information from the college scorecard can help her as she advises families. Fiona wonders what college factors influence post-college earnings and wants answer to the following questions. The first one, if a college costs more or has a higher graduation rate, should a student expect to earn more after graduation? The second one, if a greater percentage of the students are paying down debt after college, does this somehow influence post-college earnings? And finally, does the location of a college affect post-college earnings? To address these questions, Fiona gathers information from 116 colleges on annual post-college earnings. So you see that on the screen, earnings in dollars. The average annual cost, which is cost in dollars, the graduation rate or grad in percentage, the percentage of students paying down debt, which is debt, and whether or not a college is located in a city. So city equals one if a city location, zero otherwise. Here we are interested in analyzing factors that may influence post-college annual earnings for 116 colleges. Therefore, we will estimate three models using a combination of four predictor variables. And we want to determine which sample regression equation best explains earnings. So model one uses only cost as a predictor variable. Model two, we have cost, grad, and debt to predict earnings. In model three, we have all four predictor variables, cost, grad, debt, and city. Before we estimate the models, I want to talk about three goodness of fit measures. The first one is the standard error of estimate. If you remember from your textbook or the videos that I've made, a residual is the difference between the observed and the predicted value of response, which residual, EI, is the difference between YI minus YI hat. YI hat represents the predicted earnings, YI represents the actual earnings. The sample regression equation provides a good fit when the dispersion of the residuals is relatively small. So if this error is small, then yi is close to yi hat. Therefore, the regression equation provides a good fit. The standard deviation of the residuals is calculated with this following formula. We have the square root of SSE divided by n minus k minus 1. SSE is the error sum of squares. So you take the errors for each observation, square them, and then sum them up, then you find SSE. K denotes the number of predictors and is the sample size. For a given sample size, increasing the number of predictors reduces the numerator and denominator. So the net effects allow us to determine if the added predictor variables improve the fit. So when we compare models with the same response, which in this case earnings, the model with the smaller SE is preferred. The second method that we use for goodness of fit is the coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination, or R squared, quantifies a sample variation in response that is explained by the sample regression equation. It is the ratio of explained variation of the response variable to its total variation. So the total variation in our response variable, or we can call it as Y, is the total sum of squares, which is SST. SST equals yi minus y bar. Here y bar represents the average value of the response variable. In our case it's earnings, so the average earnings is y bar. yi refers the single observations in earnings column. You can break this total sum of squares into two parts, explained variation and unexplained variation. So r square is explained variation 
divided by total variation. The proportion of the sample variation in response explained by the sample regression equation falls between 0 and 1, and the closer to 1, the better the fit. Okay, you may be a little bit confused about too much technical details, but think about this way. For example, your R-square is 0.72. We say that 72% of sample variation in Y is explained by the sample regression equation. So if, for instance, your response variable is earning and you choose model 3, that means your model explains 72% of changes in earnings. And other factors which we didn't include into the model 3, it might be anything else, account for the remaining 28% of the sample variation. And finally, I want to talk about adjusted R-square. The reason we have adjusted R-square is because we cannot use R-square for model comparison when the computing models do not include the same number of predicted variables, but also have the same response variable. That means R-square never decreases as we add more variables. But sometimes you may include into your model some variables that doesn't have any economic or intuitive foundation. For instance, I can add model 3 height of the student. But what is the relation of height of the student and the student's earning in the future? Since I add one more variable, R square starts to increase because you are explaining with more variables, but that variable or the student's height is not important to explain future earnings for a student. Therefore, adjusted R square explicitly accounts for the sample size n and the number of predicted variables k. You can find adjusted R square formula here. So adjusted R square, as you see from the formula, imposes a penalty for any any additional predictors. Therefore, the higher the adjusted R-square, the better the model. When you are comparing the models with the same response, the model with the higher adjusted R-square is preferred. Next, let's estimate our models. Here in model 1, only cost is going to be included to explain variations in earnings. So we are going to use here data, data analysis tool pack, and then choose regression and click OK. Our input range, earnings, our X range is going to be cost only. And since we select the data with their headers, we are going to use labels. And let's choose output range. Output range is going to be here. And click OK. And let's do that for model 2. In model 2, we have three predictor variables, cost, grad, and debt. So again, data, data analysis, regression. Our y input range is correct, but for x we need to change and include all three predictor variables. And our output range is going to be here. And click OK. And finally we will estimate our third model, data, data analysis, regression. y variable is the same earnings. And now for the input x range we have four predictors, so we are going to select four predictors. And our output range is here. And click OK. Here you can see the results. I highlighted the important statistics that we need to measure goodness of fit. Here I summarize the results in a table. When you check this table, you realize that model 3 is the best model. The reason for that is because, first of all, model 3 has the lowest standard error of the estimate and highest adjusted R-square. Model 3 explains 42.92% of the sample variation in earnings. And model 3 doesn't explain 57.08% of the sample variation in earnings.